Hello, I'm Sam from Alder Systems, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create an event in a 2M product to trigger an action in Control 4. An example of this could be when a valid code is entered on the 2M product, then trigger an action in Control 4, such as turn on some lights or turn on a feature such as some water jets, for example, which is something I actually did a little while back. Here in my setup, I have a 2N IP Verso with a touch inductive keypad, a standalone 2N fingerprint access control unit, a Control 4 EA3, and a T3 wireless touchscreen. So let's create an event from the Verso that will trigger an action in Control 4. In the Verso, I'm going to go to Directory and create a user, and I'm going to call it Sam and put in a pin code 9876. And that's it for now. We then go to Composer and go to the 2N driver I brought in via SDDP and go to the documentation tab. And at the bottom, there are two statements. Valid user code entered. This allows programming to be triggered when a valid user code is entered in the door station. User code validity can be impacted by scheduling or time profile settings on the door station and user authenticated. This allows programming to be triggered when a valid user is recognized by the door station. So I'm going to do programming against the user authenticated. In programming, I'm going to go to the 2 Verso driver and in the event dropdown, I will go to user authenticated. So when an authenticated user code is entered, I'll then go over to the action window and go to the Verso and expand the device variables. In there is an action for last known authenticated name. I'm going to click on that and under the conditions is an equals to. So the full command is going to be when a user authenticated is entered on the keypad, if the last known authenticated name is equal to, and in there I'm going to put Sam, then do an action. So I've got a Control 4 Zigbee Puck switch here enrolled into my Control 4 system. So I'm going to program that to turn the light on when a valid code is entered. If it's equal to Sam, turn on the light, delay for 10 seconds, and then turn the light off. On site, of course, you'd extend the delay for the light to go off. I can also put in another condition. So if it's nighttime, which it is now, turn on the light. So the action won't run during the day because the condition hasn't been met. I'm gonna open up the instance of my light and I'm gonna input my code. The relay is closed and the light's turned on because the conditions have been met. You can put the programming against multiple users, so if there were kids coming home from school, you could program to say when their code's entered, send a push notification or an email to your device, and then turn on the light or do whatever you want. We can use the same 2N intercom driver for the standalone fingerprint reader, but of course the driver will fail on the SIP details. So we'll go to the fingerprint reader web UI and go into the directory and add a user, and I'll call it Sam. And then I'll go ahead and scan my fingerprint in. We then go to services and HTTP API and like how you set up in the Verso, we set the system API to unsecure and the authentication to none. Once that's done, we then go to composer and then we manually add in the 2N driver. Set the HTTP API authentication to basic, and then we go to connections and manually input the IP address. Back in system design, we go to actions and auto config, and it will all configure and show the status as online. But soon though, the driver will realize that it's not a verso and then give us an error, function not supported. So we then go to the programming tab and do the same setup as we did with the verso. So the event's gonna be when the user authenticated and if that user equals Sam and it's night time, turn on the light, delay for 10 seconds, then turn the light off.
The final way we can send an event from 2N to Control 4 is using the generic TCP command driver from Chow Main. For Chow Main, you'll need to install an instance of the Driver Central Cloud Driver into your project and link that to the Driver Central portal, and then download the generic TCP command driver from the platform and then pay for your license. In Composer, I already have the Cloud Driver installed and I've also got the generic TCP command driver installed as well. Once the driver is brought into the project, it gives us a web server address, so mine's 172.16.25.113, and then it gives us a port number as well, so mine is 49228 with a forward slash. After that slash is where we put our command string in, which we input in the box below. So I'm gonna put in motion front door, all in one word, and then that's done for now. We can then create automation in the Verso to send the HTTP commands to control for, so say turn on the lights. But this time I'm gonna do it based on motion detection. In the Verso, I'll go to services and automation. If you wanna access the automation element of a Verso, you need to purchase the gold license. Then in this section, I'm gonna create an event, motion detected, and drop it onto the automation canvas. I'll scroll down to actions and find the send HTTP request and link the event to the action. In the URI text field, we input the full address that Control4 gives us. So it'd be HTTP colon forward slash forward slash 172.16.25.113 port 49228 forward slash motion front door. And that's it. We can leave all the other fields as they are. We don't need username and password. We have the options for a get, post, put and delete, which are all HTTP methods. I won't go into too much detail on these in this video. Press save and head back over to Composer. We go to programming and select the generic TCP command driver. And in the event drop down, we select motion front door, which can now program against. So when motion is detected, turn on the light, 10 second delay and turn the light off. You can also show a message on the T3 touchscreen. You can also put a push notification in there. So I'll go ahead and wave my hand in front of the Verso. And the instance of the light comes on. And then the message comes on the T3 touchscreen, motion at the front door. In the Verso, you can adjust the threshold for the motion so you can work out what's best for the site so you don't get too many motion detection alerts. The generic TCP command driver's got many functions and this is only a really basic example of what it can do. So hopefully some of these methods will be of some help for you. Thank you for watching.